have our presentation by um, Lucinda Weller. And um, I know that you're going to go ahead and introduce Lucinda. Is that right, Alyssa? And then I will um, stop sharing. And Lucinda, you can start sharing. First of all, thank you, Lucinda, so much. Um, we're really looking forward to your presentation. Uh, Lucinda says, in art, Lucinda has many lovers. Mm -hmm. Lucinda's love for image making led her to open her own home base photography portrait studio, light riding imaging in Trenton, Bordentown area over 25 years ago. She has a trail of happy clients who treasure her art. As time went on, ceramics caught her attention and the love affair with clay began. She creates various wheel thrown and hand built vessels. Lucinda finds great pleasure in gifting her work to family and friends and occasionally selling a piece. Then three years ago, she took a mosaics class. The magic of glass has ensnared her heart and continues to enchant. It's been a joy to learn this unique expressive art form from a superb teacher, Veronica Caros. Where glass is concerned, Lucinda continues to expand her horizons. She has recently included stained glass in her repertoire, something she has always wanted to learn. Lucinda is eternally grateful for the blessing of art in her life and for all of her amazing teachers along the way, including all the members of the Mosaic Society of Philadelphia. She wholeheartedly agrees with the quote, the earth, E-A-R-T-H, without art is just eh. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go, Lucinda, you're up. Hi, I'm Lucinda Weller. This is Photographing Your Mosaic, Helpful Tips and Tricks. Um, for this presentation, I'm assuming you don't have professional photography equipment, and I'm um, giving you all the tips for using your cell phone to create beautiful images of your amazing mosaics. The most important thing when photographing your work is lighting, 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 and focus hold your camera steady, fill up the frame, line up your edges, and use a plain background. Um, this is a professional setup that I learned years ago when I was starting out in photography. And if you have a digital SLR, you know, you, you want to have your, your artwork and your camera parallel and soft, even lighting at a 45 degree angle on each side. Chances are you don't own this equipment, so you can improvise, and you'll be seeing that a little later in another slide. Um, whether you have a digital SLR camera or not, your cell phone can take perfectly acceptable images for your purposes of online viewing. Sure, you'll get a better resolution image with the DSLR, but for online viewing, it's not really necessary at all. Um, so I mentioned use a plain wall. That is optimal. If you have a plain wall, you are in business. Um, this is a, a foyer with beautiful window light coming in and you can see on the right, the photograph of the mosaic comes out quite pleasing with this kind of lighting. Um, if you happen to have track lighting as I do in this particular spot, that adds a nice sparkle to the image. And as you can see in the mosaic image on the right, how it just kind of gives it a little extra punch. Now, things to avoid. Uh, I'd say the biggest one is laying your mosaic flat on a table with your overhead light, because that will cause distracting shadows either from your head or from your cell phone. And it'll be blocking the very thing you want to photograph. Oh, and do vo avoid busy backgrounds. I love this tablecloth, but not as a photo backdrop. Um, we also want to avoid keystoning. I'm sure you're familiar with pictures of buildings that get small at the top, and that's all well and good for a building, but for a mosaic, it's not going to yield you a pleasing image at all. So you want to look at your edges, and you want to line them up straight. So your edge of your image area will be straight with your mosaic. So uh, you want to hold your camera or your phone parallel to the mosaic. You want to hold your camera straight on to the belly or the middle of your mosaic. 
check your preview through your camera or phone and line up the edges so they look straight. That's fairly simple. Another thing to avoid is camera shake. Uh, you want to hold your camera steady, use both hands, touch that image button gently, and if you're you know, comfortable and have a tripod, yeah, use that if you're able. Okay, so we really want to avoid glare because it really doesn't show off your mosaic well at all. Flash can be a bad idea. Um, it, as you're photographing, you might want to take one or so with a flash to give yourself options and to prove to yourself that it's not going to work. But um, yeah, do not rely on that on camera flash. Okay, ah, this putty is so cool. Um, <laughs> This is a beautiful window light area with a plain wall, and uh, especially for a small mosaic, this was a trader a few, like last year that I received. This putty, sticky putty, uh, alkaline, is wonderful. You can just put it on the wall, nice and easy. I wouldn't leave it there for any great length of time, um, but it will work for a temporary situation for photographing you know, a small mosaic. Um, but it's great for posters and, and things like that. And um, okay, so this is the um, image I was able to create with the window light using the putty to stick this piece onto the wall. And uh, as you can see, window light is glorious. This is another piece, small piece, uh, done with the window light. Okay. Um, just to show you that you can use areas around your house that you might not have thought you could use. This setup is my dining room table. It's got all this gorgeous um, window light, soft window light with the um, lace curtains and it has ambient light. There's a ceiling fan with a light overhead that's not in the picture. And I've propped up this glass on glass piece on an easel and it allows light to shine this setup allows light to shine through the glass on glass piece and a little bit from above, as you can see. Okay, so I've lined it up so it looks straight to the frame. And on the right, I, you know, I cropped this picture that's on the left, I cropped it to make the one on the right and cut out all the background. And you can see how the overhead light put a nice little bit of um, highlight around the frame and a little bit on the glass in the front here, but also the um, window light is shining through. So you don't absolutely have to have the mosaic up against a window to have the light be shining through it. So I thought that was a pretty cool uh, thing to demonstrate. Yes, the easel is showing through this glass on glass piece. And if that really bothers you, you can, as we spoke about, put it on the plain wall. And here I put it with the track lighting and it's still very pleasing, even though it's not having light shining through it because it's against the wall. I think it also works. So give yourself options and maybe photograph your piece in a couple of different ways, you know? Um, some other ideas include using things around the house to create a background for yourself. This is two oversized stiff black felt pieces from the craft store, and it can make a wonderful backdrop for a smaller mosaic. Um, this, um, for my lighting source here, I'm using one lamp, uh, that I already had on that server in my dining room. And because it is such a small mosaic, it's a trader from last time, it, this lamp is sufficient to illuminate it fully. And just look at the gorgeous highlights we've gotten on this textured glass, showing up all of this beautiful use of colors. The colors are popping and it's such gorgeous texture. And it's just from one lamp, you know, with the shade on to keep the light soft. And there you go. You can create wonderful images <laughs> just in your dining room. Uh, this, is this setup here is mimicking the diagram I showed you in the beginning of the professional setup with the light sources at their 45 degree angle. Well, it can be very easily done if you happen to have two lamps or leaving the shades on to keep them soft. And that's the black felt pieces again with a little bit of a larger mosaic against it. And once you crop it, it looks great. And you, you would never guess that this was, you know, 
in a, on a dining room server. Um, another great idea is to use a cloudy day to your advantage and bring your artwork, your mosaic outside. And the light is so soft and even, it's like a giant soft box in the sky. So uh, it's perfect. Just, you know, make sure it's not actively raining. <laughs> Um, and now to capture the, this piece on the right, I, I put it on the bench outside and I crouched down so that I was parallel with the mosaic and lined up my edges and it, it worked quite well. Uh, here's another idea that I stole from uh, wedding photography days when I used to shoot weddings. We would always photograph the bride by the front door with the natural light coming in. Well, this is light from the open door. I used two artist canvas panels in this instance for a backdrop, and I used a white binder to uh, fill in the shadows, otherwise there'd be shadows on this left side here. Here it is from the other angle, um, I'm on the porch looking in to see the setup more fully. This granted will only work for a small mosaic, but I thought it was terrific for this uh, mosaic pillow. The binder's there, and it's filling in the shadow area that would be on this left side of the piece. And here's the image I was able to create with that simple setup, anybody can do. Um, so once you've captured your images, you almost always need to crop and brighten and tweak the contrast of your images. And you can do this using the software in your phone. So I own an iPhone and I, really don't have information about how to crop and edit and all of these enhancements on the Android. But I'm sure you could probably Google that and find yourself a, a YouTube video that will help. Okay, so the first thing you do, you choose the image you would like to use and enhance. Here's this on the left. So you touch your image and a menu will come up that says edit. So then you tap edit and you get this screen. This, um, magic wand looking thing you uh, touch that and it will help you adjust your brightness so all i did was move this little bar with my finger to tweak the brightness see how the one on the right is a little brighter than the one on in the middle um that's all it took for this image just to have a, a little bit of brightness and then um yeah. you would touch this crop sign see that little um where my cursor is and it's circled in red that will bring up these cropping lines and it's so easy you just take your finger and drag them to the edge in this case to the edge of the picture frame and see on the right you would line it up so it's straight and just to the edge of the frame to crop out all the background but not crop out you know hardly anything of your actual frame and then you hit done it's as easy as that um okay so some of the supplies i talked about was to use an easel from the craft store to hold up your piece if you're gonna do uh, the ambient light, you know, the dining room table setup I had. a uh, Large black stiff felt I used from the craft store. I had that hanging around already from a Halloween decoration last year when I cut out bats <laughs> and I had some stiff felt left over. So that worked out perfect. Uh, artist canvas boards, they're easy to get. They usually go on sale quite often. Uh, they're great to have around when you just need to have a quick background uh, for your smaller mosaic. And that sticky putty, which I'm a big fan of. It's, uh, I got that on Amazon, it's alkaline sticky putty. And the white binder was uh, holding my cookbook, my recipes in my kitchen. So I just put that in there um, to use as a, a filler. You can also use um, white foam core if you have a piece of that. You can use that to fill in the light as as a fill. Okay, to recap, you want to hang your mosaic on a plain wall or prop it up with an easel or such. Use soft even light. Hold your camera parallel to your mosaic. Hold it steady. Use both hands. Shoot gently. And then crop and enhance your image with the software in your phone. Um, I have in here, if you are a person who doesn't know what a JPEG is, JPEG is a file extension name. Really, when you're uh, using your cell phone, you don't really have to choose whether it's a JPEG or not. So you, don't, you can disregard this part. 
But if you have a DSLR, you're doing your editing on your desktop computer, your images are most likely going to be JPEGs. And I just wanted to say something I learned years ago that helped me is if you're opening a JPEG file, you're manipulating it, enhancing it, and saving it, you can lose quality every time you open a JPEG and fiddle with it and save it. So just give it a new name, add a one or an A um, to call it a diff something different, something different dot JPEG. So then you won't be losing your quality. If I didn't do a good job explaining that, you can contact me and it, it's fine. Um, and you'll want to choose the high quality resolution as when you're saving your JPEG, it'll ask you. Okay, that's what I have. Um, I wanted to show you this putty and another terrific use. It has nothing to do with my presentation, but this is a bit of the putty on a stick you would use if you're going to be painting your fingernails. And you can pick up a piece of tesserae with it. Oh, awesome. And um, if, you're lo if it works properly, you can get glue on it and put it where you need it to go. Uh, you'll probably need another stick to hold it while you pull this one away. And sometimes it falls off, but it's helpful enough times that I just wanted to pass on this little tip I saw on YouTube. So there you have it. Photographing your mosaic. Feel free to reach out to me if you have questions along the, along the way. Those Next are excellent, excellent tips. Anybody have any questions they either want to ask? You can unmute yourself or you can do it in the chat. Um, I do have a question. Um, what do you, how do you recommend taking a 2D mosaic, something that's not 3D, but it, it's projecting out from uh, the background from a side angle? If you take it head on, sometimes you don't get the 2D effect. Yeah, mosaics are particularly tricky because of, you know, how your eye is adjusting and taking in all those nuances of the highlights and the shadows and the texture, love texture. I would suggest just try photographing it in a few different ways and have your lighting come from the side that helps show texture a lot. So Pat, you're muted. But, oh, okay, uh, well, one side rather than both sides? Try it both ways. It okay. depends on how large the mosaic is. As you saw with that one small one, uh, that one lamp was sufficient for that. Okay. I would, I'd say give yourself options and try it a few different ways. Hope that helps. Any other questions? Well, I just have a comment, which is that... Um, I for sure am going to be thinking about these tips and tricks when it comes to like the mosaic show or, you know, even, even mini mosaics or even something that you're just going to give somebody as a gift and you just want to have some record that you made it. Um, so that's really helpful. I think it's going to really improve mine. So. Okay. There's a question from Sally Rosenwell, Rosenwell Wasser. Uh, she says, after you have the picture on your phone, do you just send it to your email and then save it to a file on your computer? Yes, I do that often. Um, but you can edit it in the phone if you desire with the phone software. If you bring it to your desktop computer, that's where you'll want to um, save it and maybe save it as a new name, especially if you're going to enhance it with software on your computer. All right. Okay, Robin Miller, you said you had a question. Um, uh, my comment is um, I do a lot of editing on my, on my phone all the time, and I use on my iPhone, in the top right corner when you go to edit, there are three little dots. You tap on that, and it says uh, you can then go to markup. I don't know if that's standard on all iPhones, um, but then doing that... There's something that allows you to, um, if there's something in the background that you want to make it, if you see a shadow and you want to get rid of it, it's kind of like a dummy down um, Photoshop. With, and so uh, I use it all the time. So oh, you might you. want to play with that. I didn't know that. I, yeah, uh, and that's I how I use markup to add text. 
Yeah, and the markup thing, that's how when I do my, my oh, I'll tell a secret, my uh, daily numbers um, immediately, you know, like to get, get it really black, that's what I use. And uh, using the Y tip will make, looks like a marker and make it totally black. So, and, and your images always look fantastic. Thank you. Okay, so mm -hmm. I use that a lot. Cool. You. On your phone. You use on it my on phone. your phone. Totally yeah. on my phone. Amazing.